What's up guys, it's Mitch here from the DIYrecordingstudio.com and today I'm going to be talking to you about my latest mic preamp build. It's the VP28 from Cappy. They're made by Jeff Steiger and they're an amazing preamp and I can't wait to show you them. So as you all know, I've been getting heavily into the DIY building of mic preamps lately and I've already put up videos where I've built the MP566 tube mic pre from Sound Sculptor, and also the MP573, which is a Neve style preamp that I built a pair of. And these preamps all sound very good. They're both from Sound Sculptor and they're awesome quality builds, and I had a great time building them. And if you want a link to those previous preamp builds, I'll put a link right up here. And thanks to all of you that have recently joined my channel. And if you're new to the channel, please hit like and subscribe down below and make sure you hit the bell icon as well. But I felt like I needed to get a different type of preamp in my studio as well. Something that had a bit more punch and something that would help my recorded material sound a bit more forward in the mix. And there's a very particular preamp that is perfect for this and it's known as the API preamp. To keep a long story short, the API mic preamp is a famous American mic pre. It was developed to compete with famous British consoles like the Neve and perhaps typical to where it was made Made, it has a lot of just that upfrontness and um, a bit more aggression um, compared to its British counterparts. And they're classically used on things like drums and very much on guitars and a lot of other acoustic sound sources. And through researching a possible DIY build of the API style preamps, I came across Cappy. Now Cappy, as I mentioned, is a company developed by Jeff Steiger, and I believe that he was an engineer who worked and serviced the original API machines. So he's very, very familiar with the original consoles. And what he's done is recreate all of those famous EQs and mic preamps, and then build upon that and created a couple more devices as well. And so Jeff Steiger has created this amazing website where there's heaps of products that you can have a look at and the options are that you can get them either built or you can buy them as a kit and get someone else to build them or you can take the route that I did and obviously buy the kit for yourself to build. And after doing a bit of research of the different preamps that he has available there, I decided to go with the VP28. VP28 is a very interesting preamp design. It's based around the original API channel strip so it actually has an input gain and an output gain instead of just the standard input gain that you can drive into, which means you have the option to have a nice clean gain staging, or you can drive the input transformer a bit harder and turn down the fader and get a bit more coloration, which is an awesome option. And I should also mention that what gives the API its sound is its famous op amp design, which is an interesting array of transistors and resistors that help amplify the mic signal, but also give it some of its characteristic sound. And the way they were designed on the API units is that they're actually interchangeable. So you can put in different op amps and switch them out and change them for different sounds. Now I'm sure these are quite subtle, but through searching through different audio forums, some people definitely have their preferred op amps. And this will be something interesting to try out maybe later down the track. So I hope you enjoy this build. That's enough from me. Let's get into it. So first off in this build, you want to find the bag that says main PCB and empty that bag of all of its components and other bags and find the bag of resistors and take those out and start separating them by resistance value. And what I've done here is because some of the resistors have the paper tags joining them, I've written their value there, but I've also got a piece of paper and written down the various values on the build of material sheet. And that way I can lay all of the resistors out in chronological order, which just makes it easier to find while you're putting these components in the board. And I sorted these out by using this uh, build of materials and you want to use that bill of materials to then um, put in the right components for the first part of the PCB board build. And as I'm putting in these resistors, you can just see that I'm using a forming tool like always to neatly bend the legs of the resistors and get them into the PCB board nice and neatly without any troubles. And you just want to go ahead and put in all the resistors for that main PCB board um, of that bill of materials. And then after that, there'll be a couple of other sets of resistors for the gain switches that we're going to put in as well. And then once you've done that first batch of resistors, you can flip the board over and start soldering your legs and 
Well, as you go through soldering the easiest legs from the outside, you can then snip them and get to the closer ones if you're having any trouble getting to those um, particular um, components. And once you've finished all of them, make sure you've snipped all the legs nice and neat. Then in my kit, there was another bag with some resistors and the diodes and a few other components. So I then started to sort these ones out as well. Um, and I could see that they weren't on the first run of resistors um, on that bill of materials. So I went through and sorted those out by value again and sorted out the diodes as well. And then I started filling the board, starting with these pair of rectifier diodes. And then I also placed all of the rest of the resistors that are off that main um, bill of materials list. And once the board's full of those components, you can go ahead and solder all the components in and then snip the legs nice and neat. And then we're on to the next batch of resistors and you'll want to get a couple of pieces of paper to write the resistor values down for each of these bags. And those bags are all separated in the bill of materials, ones for the stepped fader resistors and ones for the stepped preamp gain resistors. And because none of these resistors have any sort of paper tags on them, I went through and wrote all the resistor values down on paper to then order each of the resistors in chronological order of resistance value and this is just so I can measure them once with my multimeter and then put them in the matching value and then I'm able to find them as I'm filling the PCB board and it just removes any sort of error and any double handling of the components. And then once you've sorted out those resistors, you can start filling the board. And what I did was, was just start with the uh, gain switch and then filled all those resistors. And it's really easy to do because they're all labeled chronologically and they're placed in a logical order on the board. And once I did the gain switch, I then moved to the stepped fader resistors and filled those ones as well. Uh, once again, super easy to do. And once those components are all in place, you can flip the board and solder all those legs and snip them once they're all done. And then you want to get this little transistor and put it in place on the board. And that's pretty simple. Just make sure that the orientation is correct, that the semicircle shape lines up with the semicircle shape of the transistor itself. Then next, we're going to install the DOA or direct op amp sockets onto the PCB board. And what you do is just place them in each of the sockets. It doesn't matter which one goes where, obviously. And then we're going to solder them in place from the top. And they do require a fair bit of solder. Um, you want to make sure that they're soldered nice and firm onto the board. Um, and that they also are soldered in straight, like you're not bumping them and moving them in a sort of angle or anything once the solder dries and cools down um, because then the uh, direct op amps won't fit in neatly. And once that's done, you can flip the board and check that they're soldered in nice and neatly and also start soldering the legs of the transistor. And it pays to be careful here because you should uh, be careful not to overheat the transistor by soldering all the legs at one time. Um, it can cause the transistor to get overheated. So the best thing to do is solder one leg and then um, let it wait and let it cool and then solder the others after that. And then you wanna get these smaller ceramic capacitors and these are pretty easy to locate and um, place on the board, but if you're not sure, you can always check the PCB layout and documents and just find where they go. And then once they're in place, you can put down these uh, film capacitors and those capacitors, um, it's not really safe to bend the legs, so I use a bit of electrical tape to hold the capacitors in place. And there's also this metalized um, polyester one as well. And once they're in place and taped down to the board, you can flip the board and solder them in place. 
And once you've checked the orientation of all those capacitors, you can go ahead and snip the legs. And once that's done, it's time to put in the electrolytic capacitors. And the electrolytic capacitors, it's always important with these to make sure you identify the positive leg and the negative leg on them. Uh, the negative leg is marked by the silver sort of strip on the electrolytic capacitors and make sure the opposite leg, the positive leg, and it's usually the longer leg, um, goes into the plus hole on the PCB board. It's really, really important that you get this orientation correctly. And then the next lot of electrolytic capacitors actually lay flat on the board, and there's a few of these to get on the PCB. And what you should note is that they have an arrow that faces towards the negative leg. So there's a few arrows there and they all point in the direction of the negative leg. So make sure that you um, put those in place correctly as well. And once that's done, you can flip the board and solder all of those capacitors in place. And once they're soldered in place, you can snip the legs. And that's where we'll leave it for part one of this build. In the next build, we'll start on the switches that need to be soldered to the main PCB board. And then we'll continue on with some of the other parts of the assembly as well. So that's part one of the Cappy VP28 mic preamp build. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'm Mitch from the DIYrecordingstudio.com and I'll catch you soon. Mm -hmm.